Okay, here we are in, uh, in New York. Um, de facto, we derive the name PG from uh, New, New York. It's a special place. Of course, we're not talking about PG. Um, uh, who are you? What do you do here? Where are you from? Uh, what are we talking about? Uh, thanks, Alex, for having me here. My name is Iran. I'm originally based in uh, Israel. Uh, before joining Palantir... you based in Israel. You're, you're Israeli. Yes, I'm Israeli. Really. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm based in Israel. But I also live in Israel. Please call me. There's an expression in German, my name is Haza, which means, uh, yeah, I have no name. Oh, no, 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 I do, I do. Okay. Um, before joining Palantir, I was the CTO of various organizations. The last one of them was the CTO of the Prime Minister office uh, in Israel, where I actually met uh, Palantir for the first time. And kind of as a CTO, my role was to kind of uh, identify the right tech that uh, fulfills the business. Uh, but just to admit, um, m many people incorrectly think of CTO as a somewhat, you know, erudite uh, profession, which has obviously changed quite a bit in America, especially maybe less so. But when we met you, uh, when you were doing your work, one of the interesting things was you were very far ahead of the world on it, it not being just like stitching together things that may not work. It was very operational. So when you, CTO in your context may, basically meant getting operational products to the front line. Exactly, and I think part of my mantra as a CTO is when an IT professional in an organization is deploying their people, doing something that they, you know, other people outside of the organization can do better, uh, they're not deploying them in the right place. And my view was that we need to use the people that we have to basically close the gap between the off-the-shelf uh, product and the specifics of, uh, of the business need. So it needs to be very, very connected to what the business needs, and but also very connected to what I can do and I cannot get outside. So in, in a sense, like you were, well, the reason we liked you was, you know, what you see in America now is a move from CTO, has happened over the last year, that's like not maybe adjacent to the business to CTO that de facto is driving business decisions. And you were, you know, the Israel, in fact, in many ways, was on the forefront of that transformation. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with that. Like the fact that, that you, um, that if the CTO is not just, you know, writing papers, but actually know how to talk to the real developers, get them to kind of implement the vision and go and test it with the, uh, uh, with the business, almost like the forward deployed engineer. Like mm -hmm. you take the IT professional and you put them in the business division and they see whether they, it works or not. That's, that's a key part of being successful. So given how operational you are, why are you in love with the very academic term called ontology? I think the, 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 the real thing is that we've seen a lot of companies investing millions of dollars in time in kind of building software or buying software for kind of niche use cases, but the end result of that doesn't accumulate to, like, to a better business outcome. And I think what's unique about the ontology and foundry in, in, in general is that it's not like an IT tool and it's not an end user product. It sits in between. It sits in the middle between the IT and the yeah, business. Given and it's, a, them. it's a high end academic, hard to define topic that, in your view, uh, can define whether a business succeeds or feel, uh, fails or thrives. What, what is an ontology? What is Palantir's on ontology? Why is it important? Why is it differentiated? To me, it's the intersection of three disciplines in the organization. It's the business uh, language, it's the way the business analysts understand the way the business works, connected to the IT person that knows the data and needs to basically hydrate that these objects or fill them with real data so the model doesn't become theoretical. It's actually the real data that, that the business has. And the third one is the data scientist yeah, that doesn't work in the lab. Most people may believe they have something like that. What is the technical challenge that it's solving that is hard to solve that you, that may not exist without an ontology? So people have invested a huge amount of money in building these data lakes, but they still need the IT professional to run the queries for them. So they don't get what they need out of that kind of effort. And with Palantir, with the ontology, you actually get a much, you know, uh, a usable thing that could self-serve the business, that could self-serve the, the, uh, the business professional and actually work with that. And we've seen that in various places. But, but it, would another way to put this be that many people assume that 
you, the read-write function or the decisions to data lake distinction, meaning you can read and then write to the underlying database, or that you can um, make a business decision and then change the underlying way in which the data is structured, i.e. Uh, control how your business is run, is something that actually cannot run without an ontology. Yeah, I think the ontology, the way I, we think about the ontology is, is not just through the nouns, but also through the verbs. The fact that you can actually codify the, the swapping of an airplane uh, and then not just being able to perform that in your screen, but also having that to write back to the, to the and system. And why, why is that a difficult, so IT professionals will look at this and understand why this is difficult. Non-IT, non-technical people may not completely appreciate why this is very difficult to do. Why is this? Why is it difficult to develop an ontology that gives you a read-write function across a, a large organization? Starting before, just from the fact that you have enormous amount of systems that that you know each one of them has their own view and that swap thing. In their own view meaning in, in in simplistic terms each part of the organization has its own ontology. Yes, exactly. The, the, the CRM so, department, yeah. the operation department, whatever, the customer service department, each one of them has their own uh, view of that, uh, of that ontology, but they don't speak the same language. And without connecting them into one place, you can't actually apply the CEO strategy. So imagine the CEO wants to change the balance between customer service and cost of maintenance. How do they do that? Like today, they will send an email to all of these people hoping that they will apply that, each one in their own systems or actually around the system. With an ontology, they can actually change the weights that will impact the way the recommendation uh, is given to the end operational in the field. Yeah. Maybe a more uh, lay person's version is without an ontology, you never are without an ontology. You just end up with a thousand ontologies which mean your read function is broken because when you try to read what is going on with the business, you get disparate, highly inaccurate data sets because they're, they're created in, in each one in its own framework, i.e. I, 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 uh, ontology. And the write function doesn't work because they're all disconnected, actually, even if they're connected, because even if they're connected, the underlying worldviews are disparate, and therefore you cannot control your own business. If you assume that software is eating the world, then obviously business, you know, first you say we're going to manage data as if it was software. Then you're going to, but in reality what we're saying is the reason why this is selling like a weed in, in, the, in the United States of America is that businesses are actually code. Or do you agree with that? And like, and why is that the case? I think that everyone would agree today that, that data drives the business. And then the way you treat data is not through Excel, it's through code. So I think mm -hmm. that that actually works really well. Like you need to codify your business. Yeah. Yeah, although I might be the only one who doesn't agree with that. Why? But because um, data drives your business to the extent you have a read-write function with your data. Otherwise, you, are dri you believe you're driving your business with data, but in fact, it's completely disambiguated. And so what ontology is really doing is allowing you to do what you know you have to do but can't actually do. So if without an ontology, you say the data is running your business, but actually you're running your business with a stale version of the data, and the data is not being impregnated in any way with your conceptual categories that are determinative for your success in your business. Sure. Yeah, I, I like I, I took it for granted because if you if if we were saying that your data runs your business, but you have ten copies of that data, then you don't yeah. really run the business. You need you think that thing. Yeah. yeah, you need that thing to be like a single source of truth that actually you know reflects what your business has. Okay, given that you're on the the cutting edge in your past life, and we would like to believe on the cutting edge in this life, um, and you've been here for how long? Six years. Okay, why, why, I mean, I'm sure you, my charming personality is one of the main reasons you've stayed. Obviously. Uh, obviously, but uh, why, why are you here? Why are you planning, hopefully, to stay? Um, I kind of, I hear Palantir talking about the mission and a lot of that, time, of that time, it's in the context of, you know, fighting terrorism and, and all that. But to me, even in the commercial business and not just the government business, the fact that you kind of train people to take decisions based on truth is what helps us, you know, build a better world that is not based on, you know, 
uh, fake saying. news and demagogues and all of that. And to me, it's really important just for my kids. I mean, it's not just internally. Yeah. It's also externally. Like if you give an organization like the tools for them to, as we said, you know, make the decisions on your on their business based on what's really happening in their business, mm -hmm. and not by by who's shouting louder or their view of the world and all of that, mm -hmm. then then they start to think like that. You know, in the you know, one sense. of the things I really admire and actually love about the Palantir product is. In a lot of organizations, you have someone in the corner who's unpopular, who's doing all the work that creates alpha, and they do not get promoted. Be but if you're using a Palantir product, it's very clear who's creating the alpha. It's like, yes, this person actually is really valuable. And we've seen this across uh, the government context, commercial context, and it's something that I find. And I, I run into people who are, you know, were like, you know, 25 when they first used our product, and now we're doing very important things. And I believe we've played a minor role in making sure they advanced. Yeah, I, I remember the story about this uh, um, aircraft engineer that always had this theory about what's wrong with one of the things in, in the airplane, but could never actually do this. I think mm. I see him as this person in, the, uh, in that corner. Mm. And with, with Palantir and, and Foundry, he was actually able to test his theory, prove that it's right, and actually fix the problem. I yeah. think that's what well, helps him. Yeah, I, and of course we're very enamored with the fact that this problem got fixed and it launched a huge business in preventive maintenance across the globe uh, in, in, in numerous heterogeneous industries. However, my version of it is also, and that person probably advanced in their career and may, would have probably been locked in some corner because they happen to be too quantitative and they don't quite know how to make everyone happy at the coffee shop and therefore do not advance. And then the company doesn't advance. Yeah. So, in any case, I'm happy you advanced to Palantir. Thank you. Had a great time. <laughs>